Unit 11, questions 36 to 41. Okay, so we see a graph and it's a velocity um, distance graph. It's unusual, <laughs> you know, usually uh, you see uh, graphs in terms of the running man or something, somebody's running or acceleration, something's changing like this. You usually uh, see graphs like velocity versus time. You see displacement uh, versus time graphs. And uh, in these standard uh, kind of graphs, if you have um, um, velocity uh, versus time graph, then the slope, because uh, it's rise over run, change in velocity over change in time, um, would be uh, the acceleration, because change in velocity over change in time is the acceleration. So uh, that's a very standard curve. And then um, for uh, D versus T curve, uh, change in displacement over change in time would be the slope and uh, that's equal to the velocity so the slope is, is the velocity in those curves so those are standard curves and then for the um, area under the curve you don't even have to memorize that because you know that the area under the curve is just this times that be, because it's like a box you know if, if you if you had a box and you needed to get the area of the box you would just multiply this times that to get the area of the box and so the area in the curve is this times that, and then you just have to check the units. And if you have meters per second times second, then you get meters, and that will be your displacement uh, that you get by the area under the curve. So not so simple on this one, though, because we have a velocity versus distance graph. So we have to be very careful as to um, uh, our interpretations. And just with dimensional analysis, checking the units, uh, we could be quite safe. <clears throat> so the first question is, best... Uh, what were the best following estimates of the time that the runner took for the final 50 meters? <clears throat> so uh, we're looking at the final 50 meters. Um, so I'm just going to write that down there. <clears throat> 50 meters. And in looking at the graph at 50 meters, I can see exactly at 50 meters, uh, we're at 12 meters per second uh, on the y-axis. Then I go to the end of the graph and I see, like, uh, and I mean to the far right, and then I see that the curve goes down just a tad, and so it goes to about 11 and a half. So it started at 12, and it went to 11.5 uh, meters per second. So I would say that the average um, velocity here was 11.75 over that period. 11 point, between 11.5 and, uh, and 12. So 11.5, and it's meters per second because I don't want to make any mistakes uh, you know, uh, with my interpretations of what's going on. So during that period, this, this was the distance, this was the average uh, um, velocity. The, the meters cancel, we get denominator, and the denominator becomes the numerator, uh, so that becomes seconds. And so we just have to figure out mathematically uh, what does this mean. There's two ways you can do it. You can estimate. We have 50 over 12. That's 50 um, over 12. And 12 goes into 50 four times. So that's 48. Um, so you end up with 4 and 1 sixth. And uh, 1 sixth is uh, it's about uh, 0.2. So that's 4.2 seconds. So there's your answer, uh, 4.3 seconds. If you want it to be more precise, there's another way. If the answers were too close, you just you would go like this. You'd, you'd say uh, multiply top and bottom by 100, and then you would, you would have this. Um, and then uh, you would have to see how many times does this go into this. And you sort of multiply it by 4, and you would have uh, 4,700. And then you would have 4, so that's 4,700, you would be left with 300 over 1175. So we have 3 over 11, so this makes, brings us closer to 4.3. So just in case, depending on how close the answers are, you, you, you might uh, want to use one of those techniques. But either way, uh, there's, there's your answer for the number of seconds um, for question 36, which is B. Then 37. Uh, the best of the following estimates for the average acceleration of the runner over the first 15 meters. So now um, we're going to look for the average acceleration of the runner over the first 15 meters. So for this, we're going to use uh, some of the equations that uh, they provided for us. 
So the equation they've given is um, v squared uh, minus u squared uh, minus uh, 2as, 2, I'm sorry, equals 2as, which is twice the acceleration um, times the uh, distance. The distance we're right now being given is 15, um, uh, 15 meters. The acceleration is uh, what we want to uh, calculate. The, um, the final velocity, what we'll do here is we will uh, take the um, velocity that the person had at the end of the race and the original velocity um, is going to be uh, zero. So if we just uh, take a look at the curve, I'm going to pull it. so when we look carefully at the curve for the first 15 centimeters, uh, sorry, 15 meters, if you look carefully, you'll see that um, at the end of 15, we are at 9 meters per second. So this is our final velocity squared. This is going to be um, 9 squared, which is 81. And our original velocity is going to be uh, 0, because we went from 0 on, on up in those 15 uh, meters. So this is going to be 0. And so we have 30 on this side. Uh, 2 times 15 is 30. We divide both sides by 30. Um, then we have 81. So. Uh, this goes to acceleration is equal to um, 81 uh, over 30. So, and from that, we can say how many times does 30 go into that? So it's, uh, it goes 60, so we get 2 and 21, that's equal to 2 and 21 over 30. And 21 over 30, that's just like having a 0.6 or 0 0.7, 0 0.66, 0 0.7, so this is equal to 2.7. And uh, so that's our acceleration. Uh, it's 2.7 meters per second squared. The answers were far enough apart that we were comfortable enough to do that kind of estimating. And, um, and uh, Acer said that we could, it's not that the acceleration necessarily was perfectly constant, but Acer said in the problem that we can use the equation to, uh, even if the acceleration was only approximately constant. So now I'm moving over to the, uh, to the next uh, question. So, 38. The graph that best... Okay, well, first of all, before I even look, look at that, notice that 38 is a distance uh, versus time graph, and that means that the um, velocity is represented uh, by the slope. So I'm looking carefully here um, at, uh, at the curve, and, um, and I'm going to look at uh, the time. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to first look at the uh, first 25 meters of the curve. And, and for this, I'm going back to um, the figure one. And I'm looking at the first 25 meters. I'm going to choose a period of time in the curve that I can find again among one of the answer choices. So I look at the 25 meter point in figure one, I go up and I see that it goes to 12 meters per second. So at, at 25, I have 12 meters per second. Now at zero, I have uh, zero meters per second. So now I'm going to uh, calculate the average velocity between 12 and uh, 0 is going to be 6 meters per second. And so in that distance of 25 meters, we would have had 25 meters. Um, we would have gone an average of 6 meters per second because the top speed was 12 meters per second. The bottom was 0. So that's an average of 6. And so this is going to get me 6 into 25. It's 4 times uh, plus 1, 6. So again, I'm going to have 4.2 seconds for this. Okay, so I have 4.2 seconds for the first 25 meters. I just took this information from figure 1. Now I'm going to look 
at the different figures A, B, C, D. Now, I'm going to look for uh, 4.2 seconds, and I'm going to see whether or not it corresponds to 25 meters in each of these uh, diagrams. So diagram A. I look at 4.2 seconds. Now, now notice, they've marked 4 and 6, so 5 is in between. So 4.2 is really, really close to the number 4 in the graph. And if I do that, and I put a little, you know, uh, dotted line going up and then a dotted line going to the side to see where it intersects on the y-axis, <clears throat> it seems to intersect around 30 meters. Mm, it's not exactly what we're looking for. Anyway, w I'm not sure if I could be off, so uh, we'll come back to that one. If we look at B, we look at 4.2 seconds on that graph, we go up to see where the curve intersects, and it intersects, well, pretty close to 60, uh, definitely somewhere between 50 and 60 uh, meters. So B is definitely wrong. Um, uh, I'm just for fun, I'm going to move on to D. So looking at D uh, at 4.2 seconds, going up, finding the curve, going to the side, it's over 40. Definitely too high, we have 25. Looking at C, um, going up again <clears throat> to the curve at 4.2 seconds, going across just over 20, but definitely less than 30. It's definitely less than 30. C is the right answer. <clears throat> and the other thing I like about C is after the 4.2 seconds, notice how straight uh, that uh, the line is. So that and that is, that represents the uh, velocity. And the velocity is quite constant not perfect but very quite constant and that seems to be uh, pretty consistent with the uh, original curve in figure one so um, answer choice C is correct we move on to question number 39 so question 39 um, best of the following estimates is uh, time that the runner took uh, to run in the first 20 meters well, okay, in the first 20 meters, of course, the runner is starting from slow and then is starting to go faster and faster. So in the first 20 meters, uh, when you think that the person ran 100 meters in 10 seconds, it wouldn't really make sense to run the first 20 meters in less than 2.5 seconds because, uh, I mean... That means the person's been running the entire race at, a, at this exactly the same pace when they started with zero velocity. That's impossible. So answer choices A and B are way too fast. Um, so you really wouldn't uh, consider that. And then um, to get the answer, you know, basically, if you got 38C is the correct answer, then all you look, have to do is go to 20 meters in the graph um, of 38C, come across and then look at the time and you'll see that it's about 3.5 seconds. So it's uh, 3.5 seconds from the graph and there's your answer. And you can answer with confidence because you answered C with confidence um, for 38. So 39, the answer is C, but if you still aren't feeling too confident about that, uh, you know, there are uh, ways that uh, you can uh, work it out. Otherwise, you can look at, uh, for example, the first 20 meters in, um, in the uh, figure one. So you go to figure one, you look at the first 20 meters, and you'll see that the, uh, the velocity is 11. So the velocity is at 11 meters per second. It started at, over the first 20 meters, the end would be 5.5 meters per second. So we have second is the average velocity, and that was over 20 meters. So we have 5.5 uh, meters per second. And um, then we can just uh, do a little math, double that. Um, we have 40 um, over 11, and then uh, we, that's 33. Uh, 11 goes into uh, 43 times, so we have 3 and we have 7 over 11. So, and so that's uh, approximately uh, 3.6. So you can do it either of those techniques, and, um, and of course, uh, um, we just calculated that as 3.6 uh, seconds because meters over meters per second and the meters cancel, denominator in the denominator becomes the numerator. So we have 3.6 seconds. So, 
we move on to the next one of the following the distance that the runner traveled during the first five seconds uh, is closest to and you know again here you just uh, it's right off the graph 38 C uh, you look at uh, the time in seconds at five seconds you've got exactly 40 meters and uh, and then you move on to the next because you only have uh, 1.5 minutes per question <laughs> even if I'm taking longer than that. So um, 41, uh, in another race, um, the runner ran 200 meters in a straight line, 19.5 seconds. For the first 100 meter, it was the same as before. His accelerate, if the acceleration was constant, the estimates of his velocity up, upon crossing the line, that means his final velocity. So what we'll do, we take the final velocity from figure one, because that's going to be the original velocity of this person. So, and looking at figure one, the, the final velocity there was uh, 11.5. So our original velocity um, will be 11.5. So our uh, original velocity, 11.5 uh, meters per second. Okay, and then for our time, it took uh, the runner 10 seconds to run the first 100 meters and now 19.5 seconds for the entire race. So now we're going to use a time of 9.5 seconds for this new 100 meters. So 9.5 seconds uh, for the new 100 meters. Now velocity is uh, of course uh, distance over time and so we have 100 meters um, in uh, 9.5 um, do we have more than that? No. Oh, 9.5 seconds. So that's uh, the same thing as saying 1,000 uh, over 95, uh, which is um, now I'm going to divide by 5, divide both by 5, and that will give me 200 over 19. And um, so now I can see how many times 19 goes into 200, and uh, that will be 10 times, and I have 10 over 19. So I have 10.5 uh, meters per second, 10.5 meters per second. Okay, so now uh, I just have to get uh, the, the meaning of this. We have 10.5, we, we had originally 11.5 was the original uh, velocity. Now we have uh, 10.5 uh, meters per second, but this is the average velocity. This is, has calculated the average velocity over the last 100 meters. So we just went from one to the average one. So the final velocity here is going to be 9.5 meters per, per second. If you're not comfortable hearing it, <laughs> hearing uh, you know the way I just said it. Uh, so this is the average velocity. You can see that from a distance over time, 100 meters over the 100 meters, using the 9.5 seconds we get this number. So that's the average, V average. And V average is going to be V final uh, minus V initial. That's how it works for all averages. <laughs> you know, it's final minus initial. So the um, final was uh, um, 9.5. The initial is um, uh, 11.5 and then uh, we divide by 2 and this gives us our average uh, velocity and that's 10.5 which we calculated there so that works out and so the answer for 41 is C